Hey, what's up guys? This is Sean. Thanks for following this Ember series this far. Today, we're going to finish the project and talk about the form input value changes, plus why and how to use the tracked properties inside the JavaScript native class. So let's get started. The first thing we're doing today is to enrich the view of the shopping cart. We're going to add the image and also the price to the selected item inside the, the item list. And let's run in our app. After refresh, we go back to the home page and we choose some items and add them into our shopping cart. So you can see here we have the headphones and also the shoes. And you can see the name and price over here. And we will add some styles to make sure it looks properly. So we create a new SAS file named cart. Let's make sure we have the fixed size image. Don't forget to add the cart item class back into the template. And let's add some item here again. And it looks very nice. But looks like we're missing the dollar sign for the price. So let's use our uh, currency hopper here. And let's try again. You can see the dollar sign. The next thing is we want to show the numbers of the items that we selected so we have to change the structure of how we store the data. So let's go to the service slash shopping cart. And I'm gonna change a little bit here about the item. First of all, we need to find the existing item that we already added. We look through the item list to see if we have the uh, existing one has exactly the same name and also the color. If we do find the existing item, we increase the count. If we don't find anything, we just add the item into the list and also set the default count into one. Now let's go to the cart template and add an input field to display the current number of the item. Once we save it, we back to the home page and add one item into the cart. You can see the number is one. And if I add another one, this will be two. But obviously this is still one, which means something wrong happened. So let's open our console and see what's happening. It fails when we attempt to update the object account to two, which we need to mark the property as track in here or use the Ember set. So what do we do here is to create a class and use the track the property. And here we have some other properties that we need to define. There are name, color, image, and price. So within the constructor, we need to initialize those properties. So when we add an item into the list, we initialize a new instance of the item class. After we save it, let's try again. So this is one, and this is two. In the meantime, you might notice this is still one which means we also need to modify how we show the indicator above the card icon. So what do we do here? It's to grab the whole list and add the all the counts for an individual item together and show that number. Now we add one item, the second item and third item, and the number shows correctly right now. The next thing we wanted to do is to manually upgrade the count of the item within its input box. So let's go into the cart template and add an action here. We're going to use the own helper here and invoke an input event. Then we put our action name here, which is update item count. But since we need to know which item we need to update, we also need to pass the item here. And with the arguments, we will need to leverage the fn helper so that we can pass arguments. Then we go to the card controller to add this action. Don't forget to import. So the first argument here is the item we passed, and the second argument is the, uh, the event. So the way we get the actual value of the input box is from the event.target.value. 
Then we're going to update the count of the given item. So let's try to see if that works. It's one right now, and if we add it to two, it updated to two. And if we if we reduce it, it's going it's going to become the negative number, but we don't want that to be happen. So we do a check here, which we only update the item count if the value is larger or equal to the zero. So let's try again. And it still doesn't work. So we need to force to set the count equal to zero if it's less than zero. And if we try again, it's working right now. So here is just a quick reminder. Let's go back to the card template. And you can see we didn't pass any events in here. So let's show this side by side. So you can see we have the event as the second argument, but we didn't pass anything here, which means if you're using the on helper and invoke the uh, event, the default argument which pass into your action will be the event, even though you didn't explicitly specify it. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is to uh, calculate the subtotal text and the final total. So let's go back to the card controller and change how we get the subtotal. So instead of getting the fake model, we use the cart item list and save it. So now everything is zero. Uh, so we go to the home screen and add few items here. Let's say I add three of them. And you can see we have all them listed here and also have the aggregated subtotal. So if we change one of them, this one update. The reason for that is we didn't take the item count into the equation. So in here, instead of just add the item price, we need to times item count. So let's save again and then go to the home screen and add item. Once we change the, uh, the count, the subtotal and text and total will be updated as well. The reason for those things to update so smoothly is because everything is checked. So the item list is checked, you can see here. So whenever we change the item list, it's going to update. And then within the item list, we have the native class, which have the tracker property is the count. So whenever this is changed, it's going to affecting this thing and also affecting the item list. And then it's going to populate the changes so that we can see the final results. That's why the nested tracking is so important when you have a very complicated data model. That's pretty much about this tutorial. Hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you want more. So even though we kind of finished all the functionality inside this project, but this is not done yet. So for the next tutorial, we're going to talk about the Ember data. It is super powerful, can help you to manage all your information. So see you next time.